This is the EC950 Dedeka Maestro Plus. I've already done a video introducing this machine, doing an unboxing and a first impressions. Now I've got to use it a little bit. I've used it in the base mode and in the advanced mode. And that's what we're gonna do today is just, again, introduce this machine and its features, what it comes with shortly. Then we're gonna use it in the basic mode because that's how I think that a lot of people are gonna be using this. And then in the advanced mode as well to show you kind of what you can do with the machine. So the machine itself is, in my opinion, uh, quite a handsome, design it is still based on what has made the Dedica so popular up until now in the shape having a smaller width just that the whole thing in general is pretty much what you would expect from a Dedica it, it does have some different design cues now you've got a slant here in the back which I think looks pretty neat you got these heat slits on the top you've got a bigger water tank and the water tank is now opaque. It's also larger. This is a 1.6 liter compared to a 1.1. You do need that extra water, however, because this adds another feature. It will purge out the thermal block afterwards, and that takes water. You've also got more of a bulge here on the side of the drip tray, and that's to accommodate for putting on your pitcher, like so for when you're doing your auto steaming. What is new, however, there's a, a couple of new things. There is a newer porta filter. This one is a stainless steel one. I have got a strong magnet right here and this is not magnetic. The casing is also stainless steel. In this case, it's not magnetic. Stainless steel, however, can be magnetic. Some of them are like this one or like that one. So there's different grades of stainless steel. Startup time is similar to before. It's about 30 seconds. And you can also choose different standby times with the settings up on top. I've just got it set to shut off after five minutes because you know what? This machine, it doesn't warm up the brew group anyway. You can leave it on for three hours. It's not gonna make any difference. So I just have this turn off after five minutes to save a little bit of energy. And otherwise on the top, you've still got the volumetric dosing for a one espresso or a two espresso. And you can choose now temperature for your milk foam as well as the milk foam amount. The steam wand, this is very new. This steam wand, it's got the three hole tip and it's got a, a thermal probe on here as well. What you'll also see is that it's got a manual setting as well as an automatic setting. So you can steam like this manually, we'll do that later. And you can also steam automatically. Now, before I forget, what you're not gonna see anywhere on here, unfortunately, is a hot water spout. There is no way to get hot water out of that steam wand, and I think that sucks. That is really quite an omission in my part to not be able to run any water through there to make a, an Americano or a tea or something. That's a lot of jabbering. I would say let's just use the machine and see how it works. Getting value from this video? Please take a moment to like and subscribe. And what I'm going to do is use it first in basic mode and I want to use it namely in the way that I think people are going to be using it with pre-ground coffee. Because when you buy this machine and you spend 400 big ones, you might not go and spend another 400 on a grinder. So start with something like this and just see what kind of result you get. The machine comes with this little scoop here. The scoop allows about 10 grams. I'm gonna do about a scoop and a half. I'm doing a double, a double espresso here. So I usually like to use about 14, 15 grams for that. Of course, this machine doesn't come with a funnel either. So it's a little bit messy, but that's all right. Espresso is messy. All right, so we got our puck loaded there. We're going to use the included tamper. Give that a tamp. And that's what we're working with right there. Let's stick that in the machine and pull ourselves an espresso. I'm on the medium temperature. So medium temperature is supposed to be 94 degrees. And I'm gonna hit the two times espresso button to get the volume that I want. Probably when you're just starting out, you don't have a scale yet. And so we'll just do volume. We'll just stop at where we think it looks good in the espresso glass. But what we will do, what we can do, is warm up the brew group a little bit, warm up the es espresso glass. That's always a good idea. So 
So what you also notice there is a pre-infusion. It does it. Da, 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 <laughs> That's a pre-infusion coming out. It's like a little bit of steam and, and some water uh, to get the puck pre-infused. Let us insert our portafilter now. And if you get this machine new or any Dedeca new, just know that when you're inserting the portafilter, it's going to be tight the first few times. But that should go away after a couple of days. All right, let's go ahead and start our shot. All right, we'll stop it just there. Oh, it didn't stop anyway volumetrically. So that's fine. There we got our shot. Actually looks pretty good. All right, so the machine is gonna keep dripping a little bit because as I mentioned, there is no pressure cutoff there. And I would recommend leaving that in there for about 60 seconds, just like any other Dedica. We do have crema on top. Now this has been made with a pressurized basket. It's actually the basket itself which is creating the pressure. There's just one hole on the bottom. It has to get forced through that one hole. Therefore, it's quite a turbulent process. And I say that this is kind of a fake crema, but it's a crema nonetheless. So actually, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I have been satisfied with the pressurized extractions I've gotten out of this machine. They're more balanced and less bitter than I'm used to. Of course, they are lacking in depth and in complexity of flavors. That's what I find, but it's, it's good for a pressurized extraction. I'm satisfied with that. Let's clear this out. This is one thing I really don't like about pressurized baskets, and that is that it's really hard. It's hard to get that thing puck out of there, even if you bang it. I mean, you really gotta bang it hard to get it out. And with a non-pressurized, which we'll see later, it just comes right out so easy. And I'm gonna put a link for non-pressurized basket into the video description. So just have a look there for that. This is a non-pressurized one, by the way. This is an IMS H26 basket. That means 26 millimeters in depth. And this fits right inside the portafilter. No problem. So we can also keep the normal portafilter, put a better basket in there, and you're good to go. But let's go ahead and finish our drink. We wanna make a cappuccino, and we're gonna use the auto steamer. So I think that's really the main appeal to this machine is the auto steamer. It does a pretty darn good job. I have used it quite a bit, and it doesn't get milk like super silky like, like you can get it automatically, but for an auto frother, it does quite a nice job. The trick is use fresh milk, not super high pasteurized milk. The fresher, the better. I also like to normally use high fat milk, like 3.5 or 3.8%. This is just 1.8%, but that's all I have right now. One thing you will notice with the auto steaming, it first purges the wand of any water that would be in there. Then it steams. Then it purges the whole circuit because it's heated up to steam mode. So it purges all that steam back out down here into the drip tray. And then finally, it will purge out the steam tip, which is nice. It does those four things for you automatically, but it is loud. It's loud. All right, so I've got it set for a medium amount of foam, medium temperature, that's 65 degrees, and let's go. Okay, we want the steam to 65 and we are actually at 64, 65. So it does steam to temperature as well, which is super nice. And it does, it does pretty good with the texture. I mean, the milk looks pretty still. What I do like about this very much is that it's a non-burn steam one, so it wipes off really easy. And now watch this, it's going to purge itself. Let's get a close up of that. One thing I like to do is kind of stir the crema before pouring the milk in. Sometimes that helps to loosen up the crema to get a little bit better design. It's just all kind of sinking to the bottom. So. I've gotten some good pours um, with the milk foam. I've gotten pours that are not as good. It's kind of inconsistent 
what you get, but the important thing is the taste. So let's just taste it one time. And the taste is pretty good. I think that people in general are gonna be satisfied with that. This one turned out a little bit too milky. And that's kind of the thing with these auto frothing wands. Sometimes the consistency is just right, other times it's not. I don't know if that has to do with atmospheric pressure on the day, how the weather is, stuff like that, but this certainly does a better job in manual mode and that's what we're gonna do next. Let's move on to advanced mode. All right, so for advanced mode, what we need is in this case, I'm gonna use a bottomless porta filter. I'm gonna use an IMS basket. I've got a nice funnel here for doing my dosing. I've got a tamping uh, station here. I got a WDT and I've got a little bit different tamper. This one fits the basket a little bit better. And let's just go ahead and start with our shot. I'm gonna use 16 grams. I'm using um, something like a medium, slightly on the darker side of medium roast. It is a freshly roasted bean. And I'm using the Libra from Eureka just because it's super easy. It weighs for me. All right, so I can just go ahead and distribute a little bit here. Now, what's nice about the Dedica is that you can, you can do that. You can use it in basic mode. And later, if you decide that you like the hobby quite a bit, then you can use it in advanced mode. Excellent. So that's what our puck looks like right there. Let's see what kind of extraction we get. All right, in this case, I'm actually going to weigh the shot and I'm gonna time it as well. I got 16 grams in, I'm gonna go for right around 30 grams out or 35. And you can kind of vary that depending on your bean and what you're looking for. The longer you run your shot is the, at the end more bitterness that's going to come through. So you can kind of adjust it. The beginning of the shot is quite sour and salty. Then it becomes more balanced and at the end, it's more of the bitterness that's getting extracted. And so we can just extract how we want. But the ballpark figure is to say, okay, let's do a one to two extraction, 16 grams in the porta filter, 32 out into the cup. Alrighty, 32 grams. And then we got a pretty nice looking shot. It's steaming a little bit, in fact. Sometimes people wanna know how hot it is in the cup. So let's just check out the top. It is currently 63, 65 degrees Celsius. And uh, how's the taste on this one? It's a nice shot. This machine has provided me with what I feel like are better shots, a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more depth in flavor, a little bit more um, separated, you could say, in the clarity than the previous Dedica. It just somehow has more of a balanced flavor, less astringency, a little bit less sourness. That's how I feel. With that being said, I have measured the temperature on this one. It does include a thermal probe on the exit of the thermal block, which would indicate a PID control. However, it is a thermal block, and I find that thermal blocks in general are not that rock solid. The curve kind of looks like this, that it goes up sharply at the beginning, and the, towards the middle of the shot, it kind of bends down and then goes back up towards the end of the shot. So it's not rock solid like what you see with boiler PID machines but i do believe it's better than the previous dedica and the shot is tasty it's got notes of dark chocolate it reminds me a little bit in the aftertaste of raisins a little bit of sweetness in there so it's a good shot good bean now let's move on to steaming some milk First it purges. It's pretty easy to get a nice whirlpool going, but you will notice that due to the thermal probe here, it, the bubbles do get kind of stuck in the middle a little bit. It takes a while to get those incorporated. What is also nice is that it will indicate here, once you hit 60 degrees, for example, the first bar will stop flashing and become solid. 
like now. Here we got some pretty nice milk in. Before it was also silky on the top, but the problem is with the auto frothing is that it just doesn't incorporate top to bottom at all. All right, so there's our cappuccino made in advanced mode. And how's it taste? Much better, to be honest, because the milk froth manually, it's just way tastier, way silkier, just a better texture top to bottom. That is a, a very tasty cappuccino. Let's purge that steam wand. As I turn this, by the way, there's something I haven't mentioned yet that I do also appreciate about the design is that it's got slits here for your hands for your fingers so that when you lift this to move it around that's much more ergonomic i really like any machine that allows you to pick it up more easily so that you don't drop it because if you're clumsy like this guy you gotta watch out let's talk about some closing thoughts on this the delonghi dedica maestro plus is it worth the extra price that you've got to pay for it over the previous dedica and who could it be for? So in my opinion, the machine, it's an upgrade over the previous Dedica. Whether or not it's worth it is going to really depend a lot on your region because some of the old Dedicas still sell for quite a high price. And this might not be much more than that. But in other regions like in Europe where the Dedica is very cheap, this upgrade is almost three times the price and then i would say no it's not worth it what i do like about the machine is the fact that it's got a nicer three hole steam wand that is a welcome change it's i think going to be nice for people who want to do auto steaming that is a nice feature to have the fact that it purges the circuit that it purges the steam and everything out of the boiler is a nice thing so you don't have to think about that it's just it's a more ergonomic user experience, especially for people who are just getting into it. And you know, it does cost more. It includes these two new three-way solenoids in there. And those are expensive. So those themselves already cost between 25 and 50 each. So I feel like the price is justified, but you have to take a look in your market and see if it's worth it for you or not. But I do like the machine. I like the looks. I like the results it gives. To me, the espresso seems to be smoother, more well-balanced than before, less astringency, less sourness. Uh, I can steam milk a little bit better with it. So in general, I'm satisfied. But I'm wondering, what do you guys think? Is this an interesting machine for you? Yes or no? Write into the comments below. So until next time, I say happy coffee drinking and happy, happy cappy. <laughs> and happy cappuccino drinking. Bye now.